uh, a group that I have utmost respect for. How many of you either know of or have worked with the group called Vision Synergy? Okay, not too many of us. They basically, they are a ministry that's been around for 30 years, and they basically help scores of organizations and networks work together. Um, they are the experts on collaborative initiatives and partnership processes in the faith-based community. And so this is decades of experience. I'm going to give and steal from them in about six minutes. They figured out, and actually Phil Butler, who founded Vision Synergy, wrote the book on this. It's called Well Connected, uh, a tremendous resource if you are involved in any kind of a collaborative endeavor. But I'm going to give you the cliff notes. These are the eight key things that must be in place for any kind of a collaborative endeavor to be successful. Why are we going here? Well, one, this 2020 vision is a collaborative endeavor. I found myself in very well, close and growing partnership with the Conkeys and the Create International teams. Um, but then if you actually get involved in a particular film project, you're going to find that doing a film is a very collaborative process. And so these are the principles that just need to be in place. So here we go. 30 years of experience in just a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, effective collaboration is about a powerful, commonly owned vision. Uh, you're in this room because you have something of a gospel, missional, Great Commission DNA in your bones. So that's what distinguishes us from a lot of others on the planet. In particular, we have a more narrow focus on least reached and least engaged peoples. And then we even drill down a little bit further because this is very focused on audio, visual, media for these least reached people that is indigenous to them. So it has to be a very clear but a very compelling vision. Uh, and then it has limited achievable objectives. Part of the thing that I love about the 2020 vision is it's really clear. Um, they, the, the CREATE team has done a great job of researching languages and constantly updating what's available out there and said, you know what, we're going to go after these 160 least evangelized mega people groups. And so, you know, we can move forward and celebrate the progress that's already been made. Effective collaboration is built on trust relationships. That's a no-brainer, but that is much easier said than done. Uh, I've done lots of these, and I always find that there's four bridges that have to be crossed in order for trust to happen or for something good or some people to work together. I have to know you before I'm going to run the risk of liking you. And if I cross that bridge, then I run the risk of trusting you, and only after I've gotten across of that bridge that I might consider doing something with you. So that just takes time. That's a slow dance. That's messy. There's not a, there's not a program for that. And so that's part of the reason why we have round tables and we sit in this room for a couple of days because we want you to get to know others. Uh, it was two years ago that I adopted the Turkmen language over in that corner. It was last year at the EMDC gathering that I happened to meet Nilufar and Marina and Mareka. And so with Penny and others, we just had this like connection and so a year later, now three days ago, we met again, and now you can tell, like, hey, I think I, I know, I like, I trust, I think I can do something with these people. Effective collaboration needs a facilitator. Somebody has to say, I care enough about this, this opportunity to really get under this and make it a reality. So when Calvin was sharing the vision uh, post that meeting in Japan in 2010, where this collective group of people said, wouldn't it be cool if we could do these things, and here are the eight things that would need to happen, somebody had to say, you know what, I will get under the rock and start to help to make those eight things become a reality. So whether that's building websites, doing research, all of the things that really the, the CREATE team has gotten behind, they've basically stepped into that gap and says, we'll be the facilitator of this vision. That is a very different thing from being the owner of a vision. God is the owner of the vision, but God is raised up, create to be the facilitator of the vision. Effective collaboration is a process. It's not an event. Uh, for those of us who come from a more Western background, and I am very much in this, I, I, like, I like achievements and accomplishments, but y y collaboration uh, is, because it's a voluntary process, 
uh, you can't just hire and fire people and say, you can't command. It is not a command and control structure. I have no authority in a collaborative effort. All I have is influence. And so we have to be very careful about letting the process be the process. And then it's made up of partners with clear identities and vision. Part of the reason we spend this time in here is who you are. We want to know who you are, what your particular calling is, your gifting, your passion, your purposes, because it's going to take a variety of people to come together to actually make some collaborative effort come into being. And then effective collaboration acknowledges and meets expectations of key constituencies. What does that mean? Um, each of us coming from a particular organization, we have multiple constituencies that stand behind us when we walk into these doors. I have my donors. I have the people that I report to. I have my other partners that I work with. I have my team members. And so if I'm going to come into this room, as all of us are, we're representing a number of constituencies behind us. We have to be really careful that what, this, what we do here, it fits within the framework of our existing ministry so that our constituencies can say, yes, I understand why you are investing in this process. And then finally, it focuses on what we have in common. If we, if we, if we spend a lot of time talking about our differences, philosophical differences, theological differences, geographical differences, cultural differences, we, we would, instead of moving closer to the center where we can find synergy, we would be, we would just, we would dissipate. People would just kind of move off and distance would grow between us and we'd have no opportunity to be a synergistic unit. And so we just have to keep in mind that we always focus on what is it that God has called us to that overlaps. So this is about overlapping circles. We have to stay in that sweet spot where those circles tend to overlap. So that's it. I mean, those are kind of the, the basic core ideas of partnership and collaboration. So as we move forward and invite you into some more collaborative processes, we just want to say, hey, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of all of these things and being sensitive to all of these realities. Now I'm going to segue because now we're, we've gone from the high level of, okay, what is the 2020 vision? Maybe God's begun to speak to you. Maybe he've, you've already had a long-term heart for a particular region or a people group. Uh, but we're actually going to keep moving down this funnel of saying, how do we actually go from a larger vision to actually producing films? Uh, two years ago, I was on that map. I adopted a language. Two years ago, Brother SK was on the same map. And God bless him. He gets bragging rights. He finished his film in the last <laughs> two years. And I've prayed for mine. So he's, he's way, way ahead. Um, but as we move through this process, we want to let you know that filmmaking is a team sport. And for those of you who've been doing this, that's a no-brainer. For those of you who don't have that background, here's a couple of the elements, and you're going to hear a lot more about this in the hours that follow, is to put together any kind of, and this is like any project, but in particular in a visual, audio-visual presentation, there's just a lot of work. I mean, typically we talk about the three phases, pre-production, production, production, and post-production. Pre-production is all the stuff that you do to get ready to actually go someplace and actually go into a situation where you are, create, you are, you are producing, you're capturing, you're filming, you are getting B-roll, whatever, and then you get, oh, I'm fine, thanks, but I'll, I'll take that. And then once the photography's done or the production's done, then you go into post-production. All of those require different skill sets, different people, and different roles. And so we're going to begin to talk about what does it look like to produce a film. And that just is going to in involve a lot of different roles. Now, we're going to talk about live action narrative. And what does that look like? And eventually, we're going to talk about animation. How do you get involved in producing an animation film if that's what works best in your context? So filmmaking is a team sport. You're going to learn, if you're not already familiar, what are the key roles that need to be put into place for a audio-visual presentation to come to fruition and then find distribution? So, for example, I'm doing Turkmen. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to need a whole lot of people that are on my team that I work with if this is ever going to see the light of day. So anyway, that's, that's what we've got. 